A lot of business people, okay, uh, go, go on and do every business we do. Five most common methods to network. Okay, so when building your team, these are the five common uh, methods to network. Number one is your war market. What is war market, guys? Friends and family. Friends and family, people you know, okay? Then you've got war market referrals. Here's a question. How many of you guys have been working with referrals? Raise your hand if you've been working with referrals. Okay, I need not enough hands to go up. Guys, what is the best way for you to get referrals? Huh? Ask. Ask. Exactly. A lot of times people say, hey, uh, well, I got the question, huh? What's the best way for you to get referrals? People say, do a good job and people will refer. What's up, John? That's you know what? Do a good job and, and, and people will refer people to you, give, give good customer service, return phone calls. Like, yeah, all of that stuff helps you get referrals, but the number one thing that helps you get referrals is guess what? Asking for referrals. I literally have friends. Like two or three days ago, I had a friend that said, you know what, JC, right now's not the right time for me. And I said, no problem, bro. But let me ask you something. I know you've got a huge network. You know a lot of people. You saw how good this is. Do you have no? Can you think of anybody right now at the moment? See, I teach you how to recruit. Do, can you think of anybody right now at the moment that might be open to an opportunity to a network marketing business? He says, as a matter of fact, I do. He says, I'm going to give you one person, and, and he laughed. He says, I'm not going to give you five to ten, because that's what we talk about in a training. <laughs> give me five to ten names. You know what he said? I'm not going to give you five to ten. But I'm going to give you one person for you to call that's looking at a couple of different companies and he's open. Perfect. The guy wanted nothing to do with network marketing. But then through his contacts, I call somebody else and say, hey, listen, so-and-so. Let's say it's Chris. Listen, my friend, Chris Guzman, you, you left him off, right? Yeah, Chris. Well, listen, I, I met up with Chris. I showed him my business. He told me that you might be looking for a company. I'm with a company called Wake Up Now. Are you familiar with the company? Yes. Listen, my name is Jesse Ryan Young. Do you have a couple minutes to talk? Yes, and then whatever, right? So I have I, I have not made a call. I'm, I'm just giving you an example of what I would say. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. But ask for referrals, okay? War market referrals, then work your people's people. So what do I mean? You recruit people. Remember when we talked about five to seven levels deep? Yeah. You sign somebody up. First of all, guys, when you who who by any chance I put it up there, who read my blog that I wrote today? Okay, a couple of you guys? Okay, good. For those of you guys, I wrote a blog on being a good sponsor. I call it a champion sponsor. You guys know I use the word champion often, right? Yeah. Yeah. I like that word. Okay, so a champion sponsor, that's something that, that I've been I, I've been using that word for a long time. One of my mentors used to use it a lot, so I started using it. It just stuck with me, right? And guess what? That one mentor is a number one earner at another company. Right? Makes over a million dollars a year. So I copy the right cat. Anyways, in that blog, I talk about when you... Sponsor somebody, a good sponsor, is somebody that not only leads by example, but is somebody that goes out there and helps people get paid and takes five to seven levels deep. Now, here's a reason why you want to do that. Let's say I recruit Angeline, but Angeline gets distracted for whatever reason. But before she got distracted, was she uh, uh, inspired and enthusiastic? I recruit Jonathan through her, and I recruit five to seven levels deep, right? And let's say I find a stud. Let's say I find Nate. Nate in that organization is the sharpest guy, let's say, the most motivated guy. Even if they're like some timers, part timers, or some of them quit, it doesn't matter. I got Nate thanks to that. Does that make sense, guys? Yes. yes. But you have to have a sense of urgency. So here's a question. Today's going to be all about recruiting and sponsoring. Who wants to recruit and sponsor more people? Raise your hand. Of course, right? Okay, cool. How many of you guys were today at a Starbucks or another business doing a presentation for somebody? Honestly. That's, answer me. Okay, Ray, stand up if you did that today. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. Let me see. Three, six. Six people out of this room, guys. Thank you. Have a seat, guys. Do you guys think that the numbers should be higher for that? Yeah. For sure. For sure, these numbers should be higher. Being out of Starbucks or somewhere showing the flag. What's going to make a lot of money, guys, is getting used to showing the flag. Who wants to be a better presenter? Guess how you can become a better presenter? Yeah. Show the pipe. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Who wants to recruit more people? Raise your hand. Guess how you get better? How uh, you recruit more people? Yeah. Showing the plan. Everybody say showing the plan. <laughs> showing the plan, showing the plan, showing the plan. Guess if I recruit Angelina and I want to take five to seven levels deep, guess how I'm going to do that? Showing the damn plan. Does that make sense? Yeah. If I recruit her and she introduces me to, to Jonathan, and I mean what Jonathan at a Starbucks thinks to her, you know, she shows up. I show him the plan, and he gets started. Does that make sense? Now I 
you know that's doing nothing. John, we got to do a fast start training. Remember that? That's part of the system. We find out what his goals are, find out what his whys are, get him trained, show him how to make the phone calls. Then get in front of his, his people. Tell me your name, Gabriel? David. David. We get in front of David. Guess what? What am I going to do with David? Show him the plan. I show him the plan. And guess what? What I tell Angelina to do is to show up. I tell him to show up. Because in the beginning, it's 100% me. Then, then it's 80% me, 20% them in the presentation. Does that make sense? <clears throat> then I switch it. Then it's more like 50-50. Then it's more like 20-80. Then they're doing it on their own. You guys follow what I'm talking about? Yes. Yeah. And we're going to get more into that right now. But you got to be showing a plan. See, how many of you guys here have more people at training today than you did last week? Raise your hand. You have more people from your team here at training than you did last week? One, two, three, four, five. Five of you. Okay? Congratulations to you, five. The rest of you guys, the point of this visit, you should always have more people at the event. Remember in the call I said you should think of this as real estate. Imagine if this whole side, half of the room, was your downline. Where would you be? Imagine, now think about it. Let's say this whole team was your downline, and they all, just in their entire group, recruited one and brought them to training. You take up the entire room. That's the idea. But you guys, don't let the size of this room dictate how fast you grow. If we got to open up a one university on Saturday mornings, we will do it. You guys follow what I'm talking about? That's a good problem. Have. Trust me, I'll figure it out. If we got, yeah, you know what I'm saying. If we got to rent a hotel room to do them because we're getting too big, damn it, we'll rent a damn hotel. Room. What if we got to knock walls down? We'll knock walls down. But you have to go out there, guys. This we're gonna. The people that are gonna go, they're gonna go regardless. You guys follow me? So anyway, work your people's people. You gotta show the plan. Show the plan. Show the plan. Show the plan. If you're part time, how many times should you be showing the plan a week? How many times? Five percent. Four to six. Yeah, five to seven is even better. If you put in your head five to seven, you can do way better. But at least four to six. Your agenda should get filled up big time. If I look at your agenda, I should be able to see, okay, damn, you showed the plan at least 15, 16 times last month. You know what I'm saying? 15, 16 times last month. Good job. Then you should be able to show your people how many presentations you did and show them how you're having success. Because why? You're showing the plan four to six times a week because you're part-time. If you're full-time, two to five times a day. Five days a week. Does that make sense, guys? Okay. If you're part-time, you can do four to six in one day and knock it off for the rest of the week. You know what I mean? But I don't recommend you remember minimums or maximums. If that if you just shoot for the minimum, that's the maximum anybody in your organization is going to do because what you do will duplicate. And by the way, on my, on my, on my Facebook, is the blog on sponsoring, on being a champion sponsor. I recommend everybody go and read it. So it's really good information there. Okay. Uh, it like it, comment it. It's my very first blog, so you're going to get yeah, I'm going to be blogging a couple times a week. So you guys are going to be able to, to see that stuff. Okay. And it's going to be additional training. Like, people ask me, what books you read? I read a lot of books, but I read a lot of blogs, too. That's another thing. So if you, if you start with a business, there's people that I follow. Like, my old mentor, I still follow him. He, he started a blog. Guess what? I read every single one of his blogs. One of his blogs is called The Real Color of Money. Who, who, who does that sound interesting to? Yeah. What do you guys think The Real Color of Money is? The Real Color of Money is, a color, is people. It's not green. It's not blue. It's not whatever it is. People. Where does money grow? He taught me. He says, JC, where does money grow? And I asked him. Where? He says, in other people's pockets. <laughs> Just the way that you think, right? And he says, it grows in other people's pockets. So if you've got a business that's attractive to people, and you become an attractive person, people want to give you their money. You see what I'm talking about? Who would like to have other people like plot to do business with you? Raise your hand. Yeah. Guess how you're going to get better at that? Showing up to trainings, looking, learning from people that already do that. Does that make sense? Would, it, would people want to do business with you if you do better presentations? Yeah. Yes. Guess how you're going to do that? Show you the plan. This business, you have to show the plan, man. That's where it is. You can have all the personal development in the world. You can have the best invitation skills in the world, the best three-way calls. If the plan is not being shown, you are not making any money, straight up. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. yeah. So now, you can show the plan by doing a video. You can sit down with somebody, show them the, 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 the YouTube video that we did. There's a bunch of YouTube opportunity videos, and if you don't like mine, use somebody else's, but damn it, show the plan. <laughs> right? Okay. Social media and online marketing, okay? And then co-market and digital tools. 
Social media and online marketing. I want to talk talk about that a little bit. I've recruited, I've recruited a lot of people. I know Mr. Chris Guzman, our founder four, has recruited a lot of people. I know that Ruben Bolt, another founder four, has recruited a lot of people online. I I am not an expert at internet marketing. I, I, I recently paid a lot of money to become one. Paid about five grand for somebody to teach me how to become an expert internet marketer. So I'm serious. When I decide I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. So I've got about 41 directs right now, just no internet marketing, really, just, you know, straight up, traditional, right? But I want to get the best of both worlds, right? But one of the things that I do is I, I, I use the internet. So I recommend everybody have a Facebook to connect with people at the very least. I recommend it because I recruit a lot of people. So here's what I do. This is what I used to do before, even more than I do now. Now I've been very fortunate to where I have more, more, my network is bigger, and I've got a big enough team that keeps me busy enough to build things through them. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. But when I didn't have that many people, I had to go out there and find more people to build my network. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. And when you're contacting people, here's what's going to happen. You're building a network even if they don't join the business with you. You love them coming in, and you love them going out, and you love them whether they join or not. Here's my point. People are going to come into your business you love them coming in. People are going to leave your business you love them going out. Hey, man, I wish you the best. You know what I mean? Because you never know. Some, some, some of your people might quit a year later, join your business again. See, man, you're an F7 making 15000 bucks a month. I can't believe I quit, man. You're like, bro, it's not too late, man. Get started. It's now or never. The best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The next best time to plant a tree is today. So the best time to get started with your wake up now business when you signed up. That's the best time. The next best time is now. The, the, first, the best time for you to take your business seriously was when you started. The next best time to take your business seriously is right now. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you love them coming in, you love them going out, and even when they don't join you. So like if I send somebody a message, here's what I do. I'm on Facebook. This is C activity. There's A activity, B activity, C activity. You should write that down. A activity, B activity, C activity. Here's what C act A activity is. A activity is showing the plan. Things that make you money, things that make you volume. Showing the plan and selling products. If all of your team sold two cases of Thunder today, would that drive volume? Yeah. Of course. Guess what? That's what makes you. Recruiting new people, meaning showing the plan and retailing products, that's A activity. Best activity. That's where you should be 70, 80% of the time. A activity. B activity is very important as well. That's when you're training your people. Does that make sense? But if every, here's what you got to think about. If everybody on my team the whole month just trained people the whole month, you probably wouldn't make any new money. Your residuals would kick in. That's cool. But you still wouldn't make new money. you got to get the training to lead to action. The training is for them to put you in front of the people for you to do what? Show. Show. Anybody read after me? Show the plan. So for you, I'm, when you get out of here, you're going to know that I want you to do what? Show the plan. Show the plan. PS3 is how you recruit people. You pick somebody's interest, you show them the plan, and if necessary, you do a three-way call or a three-way conversation. If you bring them here, let's say I call Jonathan, I pick his interest, you're interested in making some more money. Yes. Let's say I get him here. We show him the plan here, right? Yeah. Afterwards, Jonathan has a couple of questions. We put him in front of one of the uplines, somebody that's having success, to answer his questions in a three-way conversation. We sign him up, we get him a train. PS3. Peak their interest, show them the plan, three-way conversation if necessary. Here's the thing. You show the place ready to sign up, don't, you don't have to bring nobody to talk to them. If the guy's like, dude, I'm ready to go, sign him up. Shut up and sign him up. I've literally made this mistake, and I've seen a lot of people make this mistake. They're so excited. They got a guy. They're like, I got one. Don't ever say, I got one. Don't ever say, I got one. <laughs> like, you caught a fish. I got me one, bro. <laughs> got me a big one. You never want to do that. Hey, we have a new family member. Remember that? Yeah. Was that awesome or what? Yeah. Somebody signs up, Jonathan signs up. Hey guys, we got a new family member. Everybody applaud. Bro. Everybody got <laughs> <laughs> So everybody had applause. Then the other guest in the room, I'm feeling a little off track, but it's fine. The other guest in the room, hey man, look at some high fives and the like that. Hey man, sign me up. Hey, we got another family member. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's, guys, repeat after me. Group dynamics. Group dynamics. That's called group dynamics. That's synergy. That synergy right there is contagious. It creates an environment. You're like, dang, this is different. You know what I mean? It's a positive environment. Because I guarantee you, nobody walks into their job to nobody clapping them. 
and giving them high fives. Maybe on Fridays we were giving each other high fives. <laughs> but not, on, not the rest of the week, right? So what I do is on Facebook is there's a lot of people, and it shows you who's online right there. You guys hear what that? Unless they turn it off, right? <laughs> there, there. And I just, guys, even though I will do, send like 10 messages at a time. What's good? Hey, what's up, bro? Hey, what's up, Angeline? How you been? Long time. Or, like, let's say I don't know Jonathan. Hey, Jonathan, what's up, bro? Nice car. You're in the Mustangs, right? Whatever. I, any reason to strike a conversation. But here's the thing. Throughout the middle of the, throughout the day, I get A and B activity. C activity is when you're checking out your website, when you're ordering your, your, your Cancun cards. You know what I'm saying? When you're, you're designing your business cards or flyers or organize, organizing your day. That's why I always say finish your day before you start it. At the end of the night, you organize the day next day. I got this appointment, this appointment, or I got to go to work, then I got to do a meeting, then I got to show up to the meeting at, at night. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. That's C activity. That's also the time that you could go out and send 10 messages. You could say, I'm like, okay, after my day's over, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, on Facebook for 30 minutes, I'm going to message a couple of people and strike conversations and build rapport, build a relationship. Make that your system. You've got to have a DMO, daily method of operation. DMO. So during the day, 70% of my activities, 80% of my activities are A activities. They're action activities. They're MMA, money making activities. Okay? Meetings, presentations. I'll throw trainings in there too. But remember, at least 70% is MMA activities, A, A, A activities. Uh, showing the plan or retailing products, which really with me is 100% showing the plan. I don't need to retail a whole lot of products. Does that make sense, guys? So, showing the plan, 70% of the time. Whether it's on webinar, uh, if, I'm doing a, if I'm doing a three-way call with somebody, I'm showing the plan. Because like, let's say Jonathan, let's say Jenny put Jonathan uh, uh, to see a video. He liked it, but he's got questions. If I'm doing a three-way call, both her and I are doing A activities. Because we're showing a plan. We're getting, we're taking somebody through the process to sign up. And that's what gets us paid. Can we agree? Yes, we, yes, we get new customers. You become a new customer distributor. Pay to pay money. Okay? So, showing the plan, right? A and B activities throughout the day, 70% A activity. Uh, uh, the, the rest is B activity, okay? About 20%, 25% B activity. Then I spend about 5% on C activity. So if I'm, like for instance, I'm going to design some little business cards for you guys, right? Like our own business cards. Because anywhere else you buy them for a thousand, a thousand business cards are like 60 bucks. We're going to have them for like 40 bucks, right? But I'm not going to do that throughout the middle of the day. See what I'm talking about? Because throughout the middle of the day, I could be doing what? A activity. Show the plan. That's what I can be doing during the day. See, rich people and poor people, successful people and unsuccessful people both have 24 hours in a day. Bill Gates doesn't have like 28 hours. You guys remember what I'm talking about? He's got the same 24 hours, so do we. The difference is how they invest their time. Most people waste their time, okay? And successful people invest their time wisely. You know what I mean? So, I'm doing that, then at night, let's say for my routine is every night, Four days a week, I'm going to spend 20 to 30 minutes on Facebook making connections with new people, getting to know new people. Even if I don't know Jonathan and I message him, right, he's on my friends list. How many of us have friends on our friends list that we don't really know? Of course. Especially if you're involved in network marketing, you get to get all of our mutual friends out of you. I, I got like 80 friend requests that I haven't accepted because they don't have enough mutual friends. I don't know. I swear, if you don't have enough mutual friends, I check your profile when I got time. I have not enough mutual friends. You know what I mean? Or it looks fishy or something like that. Like only one picture, not adding you anything. You know what I mean? But here's the thing. I'll send a message to strike the conversation. Right? So I'll strike the conversation. Every time you talk to somebody, guys, the conversation of what do you do is going to come up. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. Or what are you up to? What's new? Well, I'm glad you asked. They asked you. Oh, we're rocking, help, help, helping a ton of people make an extra 600 to 1200 bucks a month. What's new with you? See, I don't even have to like pitch him. I'm answering this question, and I'm what, what am I doing? PS3 peaking his interest. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. Now he's probably gonna be like, helping people make 600, 1200 bucks a month. How do you do that? <laughs> well, here's what I'll do. You know what I mean? Do you have about seven minutes right now? Well, yeah, I do. Yeah, I'm gonna be online for a while. Check it out. I'll send you a little seven-minute video that'll explain a little bit more about what I do. I'm actually expanding my company in the area. See, see how easy it is? 
Yeah. And I'm not an expert at this stuff, guys, but I recruited people like this like crazy. Imagine if I was, imagine if you were, but the best way to, to, to go out there and do the business, to go out there and do the business. So I sent them the video. Sometimes I send people the video and they just never reply to me. Straight up. I don't care. Because he was there anyways. Wayne Gretzky said, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. You guys follow me? Yeah. If you don't take a shot, you're never going to get, 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 get credit for it. So take a shot. Who cares if I send him a video and he never replies ever again? Guess what? He wasn't on my team before that anyways. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Who gives a damn? Some people's block is, I care too much. Uh, they probably going to think I'm dumb. I'm going to look dumb. Who are you going to look dumb to? Yourself? You can't handle looking dumb to yourself and some guy that doesn't have the respect or girl that doesn't have the respect to reply. Who cares? You know what I mean? Just do it. If it's friends that I haven't connected with in a while, I'll strike a conversation. What's up, bro? What have you been up to? Long time, no talk. Congratulations on the baby. Congratulations on the new car. Congratulations on the new, you know, whatever. If you have to go on their page to see if anything is new, go on there. Pretend like you, 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 you saw it. Man. Let's say you go on his page and like a week ago he got a new job. Go back, hey, by the way, congratulations on your new job. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Then they're like, oh, thanks, bro. What about you, man? What are you up to? You just strike those. So imagine you send it to 10 people. Then I have like 10 conversations or more like five or six conversations going on. And we're just going back and forth. Some people send a video, some people I don't. Right? Because they haven't got there yet. But I peaked their interest. And the conversations are recorded there. Yeah. Then I could go back another day. Then the last thing, you're online and they're hitting you up. Hey, what's up, bro? People are lonely. They want to talk to somebody. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you, sometimes, man, I'm just like, seriously? Don't you guys got anything to do? I'm like trying to do work online, but I got my Facebook open. And people are like, bam, bam, hitting me up. I'm like, it's crazy. People, I'm, if I have more time, I'd recruit more people because, like, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> yeah. But it's personal. So somebody asked me that. Uh, yesterday, I was like, yeah, man, I recruited a lot of people on Facebook. But here's the thing. It's about connecting and making relationships with people. You might not recruit them right away. It's okay. Guys, this is not a sprint. It's a marathon. Imagine if you connect with 10 people a day. Five days a week. That's 50 people a week. In a month, that's 200 people you connected with. You guys see the exponential growth? Yeah. Now, what if you have 10 people doing that in your organization? That's 2,000 connections a month. Be it your group. You guys see the power in that? Yeah. What if just 10% of those people see a video? That's 200 people that saw that seven minute video that I like, right? And 10% of those sign up, that's 20 new people that sign up in your group on a monthly basis if you've got 10 people to look in that. I'm giving you hypothetical numbers. Does that make sense, guys? But I don't think those numbers are unrealistic. I really think they're very realistic. Then cold market, okay? So another building method, number five is cold market. Simple. Strike a conversation with people that you don't know when you're out and about, man. Hey, do you keep your income options open? Hey, man, you're very sharp, bro. What do you do? You must be a real estate agent or something. I literally sometimes go to restaurants like, hey, you're very sharp, man. You must own this place. <laughs> or you must manage this place. Oh, no, I just work here, but I just paid them a compliment. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Then they like you. Then it's easier to go. What do you do, guys? And just go out there, man. Who cares? Get it out of your system. Go out there and say, Hey, you know, you look very sharp, man. You know, do you manage this place? Are you the owner or something? No, no, no. I just work here. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. Well, you know, as sharp as you are, I'm sure you, you know, they probably pay you a lot of money. Whatever, man. Just strike a conversation. Then just, if you don't know what to say, just say, let me ask you something. This might be a shot in the dark, but do you keep your income options open? Listen, this might be a shot in the dark. This is not a question you're probably going to get very often, but do you keep your income options open? That's a simple way to do it. Or are you open to other ways of making money in addition to what you do now? Simple stuff. All you have to do is do it. Maybe on a weekend, some of you guys should partner up on a weekend. What I recommend you guys do, by the way, guys, is have a workout partner for this business. Somebody that's going to keep you accountable, to follow the seven absolutes, to read your 10 pages of a good book a day, to prospect two people a day. Right? Like at the end of the night, hey, send me a text once you connect up with five people. With 10 people. Because that's what I'm about to do right now. By the way, did you get your two? What are, what are the two names of the two people you prospected today? Damn, I haven't prospected nobody. Better get to work, bro, because my, my friends' names are Art and Lewis. <laughs> Better find some two people, John. 
Because guess what? For me and you to be uh, workout partners, I need somebody that's committed, bro. If not, I got to find somebody else as a workout partner. We got to keep each other accountable. I thought you're going, you know, for a five or six. I'm not going to go five or six. I'm not talking to anybody. Does that make sense? Yeah. You're like a secret agent, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a VIP agent. You know I mean? <laughs> I'm a VIP agent. You're a secret agent, bro. VIP <laughs> agents, like, you know, nobody knows you're in the business, bro. Right? VIP is just people know. I'm very important. <laughs> right? So, uh, three full rule of me simply means anybody comes across three feet, talk to them. Start the conversation nice and bro. Are they elders? Yeah? I've done it before. <laughs> they are elders. I like elders. Remember elders. I got elders. My brothers like them too. You know? That's what I would tell them. I like elders. You know what I mean? I'm not wearing them right now, but you know, they're very nice. What do you, what'd you buy them? Tomorrow right here? Cool. What do you do for a living, bro? You look very sharp. Oh, nice. Nice. Me too. You have a business card? Yes, I do. See? That's a really good way. Somebody has their own business. Ask them for a business card. Business people are used to giving out their business card. You realize that? Even if you don't have the courage to hit them up right then and there, you got his business card. You can work up the courage later. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Go like, damn, I was close. I almost told him. <laughs> <laughs> then, then, then you come to a training. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah. That training inspired me. Then you call him. Hey, what's up, brother? <laughs> then you're like, oh, shit. It's happening again. But <laughs> <laughs> well, you got him on the phone already. <laughs> Better say something. Man, I challenge you guys go into a room, a restaurant, start with just. Open your mouth to someone. Hey! What's up, bro? <laughs> do I know you? I'm JC, now you do. <laughs> right? Whatever, man. Try the conversation and get good at it. You gotta become a professional. Check this out, guys. Let's put these into perspective before we move on. Watch. How many of you guys think that you could go out there and get 100 no's a day? Hundred notes. Okay, great. What if a company comes to you and says, "Here's the thing. If your company wake up now, you're going to be our employee. You got to go and attend this one university, learn what you uh, are taught there, and you got to apply it to the team, and you got to get a hundred notes a day, and we're going to pay you a hundred thousand dollars a year." How many of you guys do it? Of course you would. Here's a funny thing, man. If you just do the damn thing and talk to that many people and follow the system, you're going to make way more than a hundred thousand a year. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> Seriously. And you don't have to be no damn employee. If you're an employee, you're probably cap. Let's say they're like, we're going to put the position under your name. We're going to pay you 100000 when you do this. Then your position is put, uh, uh, producing them 250000 a year residual income. And they're still like, thank you, man. Your profit is $150,000 every year in growth. Thank you. And as, if you don't show up, we're going to fire your ass. Two <laughs> things. <laughs> Think about it. Like, I, I hope you don't prospect 100 people today. <laughs> I hope you you don't learn today. <laughs> and they're saying like, dude, you already gave up your position to us. You mess around and get fired instead of us profiting 150 thousand. We profit a quarter million. I hope you don't show up to work. I hope you give me an excuse to fire you. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. Think about it. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. I'll let you know that it is worth it. Okay. Build your list. Six reminders. We're going to go through this fast. Six reminders to building your list. Never be judge anybody. The people that you think will won't are the people that you think won't will. Recruit up. Remember your tens? You want to recruit your tens. A lot of people, what they do is they make a mistake of recruiting the people that are easy to recruit. Like they're ones. Guys, recruit your tens. If anything, it's just a practice. Guys, check this out. If somebody tells you no, it doesn't mean not right now, but they're also not really saying no. They, 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 they might be saying not right now to the person you are right now, but that doesn't mean that they're going to say not right now to the person that you're going to be in six months or in a year. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. Some of you guys have some people that right now, they will not join your business, but I guarantee you, you keep saying the course, you keep reading the books, you keep showing up the training, you keep doing the business. The person you're going to become in six months, they won't say no to that person. You see what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. I got some people now that join my business that would never have joined my business five years ago. But now, they like, look for me to join the business. <laughs> this is real, real talk. 
NC DART, that means somebody who has network, credibility, desire, attitude, resources, and teachability. Somebody who has a big network, obviously that helps, right? Credibility, when he talks to those people, they listen, right? Somebody has desire, obviously that's self-explanatory. Attitude, somebody, a positive attitude. Somebody who has the resources, they have the money to get started, even though anybody can get started in this business, it's 100 bucks or 125 starting next month. And they're teachable. That's a perfect recruit right there. You guys see what I'm talking about? Usually for us, those people are people that when we start recruiting them. Bigger is better. The bigger your list, the better. The more partial you're going to have. Show your team your list. The team will duplicate you. If you want your team to build a list of 100 people, you can have a list of 10 people. You have to have a strong list. Not only that, we're going to see it in your results. If you've been in two, three months and you recruited one person, two people, I guarantee you didn't even have a big list to begin with. Time will either promote you or what? Expose you. Time is either going to promote you or expose you. Look, here's the thing. Some of you guys are going to go out there and blow it out of the water. Some of you guys are going to be lax. Then after a while, it's going to be uncomfortable showing up to events. You know why? Because you're going to realize, man, I've been in this long and I'm still not a father of three. I don't want to show up because it's embarrassing. That happens in network marketing. That never happened to me, not because I was always ranking up, but because I said, whatever. I'm going to just keep going. That's way better. But you don't want to be the person that's been here for a year and you still haven't hit Father 3, dude. Does that make sense, guys? And if you haven't, it's cool because you can start right now. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. But a year's going to pass regardless. You're going to get people on your team that are going like, to make up excuses and not show up to trainings. Because they're like, shoot, they're going to call for recognition of our friends. Or even at the meetings, they call for recognition. Now I'm going to have to stand up. And people that look at me like, dude, you're still not a part of three? You guys see what I'm talking about? And people won't show up for that reason. I've already had it happen in this company with a couple of people. That's why they don't show up anymore. It's crazy. Then once they don't start showing up, it's easy to little by little get sucked in to what they were doing before. Then, boom, the guy's working a job again. It happens, man. I'm just I'm letting you know ahead of time. See, nobody really told me these things until I realized it for myself. Damn, I'm uncomfortable showing up because I have it. But if they would have told me these things, it's crazy, man. I would have definitely looked at things a, a different way. Okay? Show your team your list. Grow your list. Your list should always be getting bigger, not smaller. You are in the network marketing business. That means you are networking. Does that make sense, guys? You're always building your list. If I have 10 conversations every day with different people, Right? And some days I'm going to have the same conversation with the same person back to back, right? But if I'm getting an average of 50 people that I'm training conversations with, I should be adding some of those people to the list. People that it, it, it express interest. People that are positive. Does that make sense? People that say that they're tired of their job. People that complain about how much money they make or the economy. I start adding them to my list. To people that I'm going to expose. Your list, if you are a professional, who wants to become a professional? Say hi. If you want to become a professional, your list should be growing, not getting smaller. Does that make sense, guys? Straight up, okay. Um, and get referrals. The best people you will get will be from referrals. How do you get referrals? Ask for referrals. Okay. So influence and concern. So who are your circle of influence? Talking about close family, close friends, people you influence, the I love you group and the I owe you group. If people owe you a favor, money, those are great people that are recruiting to the business. <laughs> And then who's your circle of concern? People you're not, di relatives that are distant, that you're not in touch with that often. Distant friends, people you influence, like your ones, we talked about that. Facial recognition on Facebook, ex co workers, classmates. You have to write this down network on purpose. You have to network on purpose. I network on purpose. I literally, like sometimes, some of you guys that have me on Facebook might have seen, I'll ask, when is the next, if any of my real estate friends or anybody in the insurance or any industry, if you guys know a good uh, business mixer, please let me know about it. Then I get people messaging me because they're all about networking. Guess what? When I show up there, there's sometimes 30 people, there's sometimes a couple hundred people. And I go and I network and I got my business cards, I'm dressed sharp, and I'm networking on purpose. You run into network marketers there all the time. I network, with, I network with them. I'm never really aggressive. Like, oh, we're with XYZ company. Oh, fantastic company, man. 
Who you with? With Wake Up Now. You, you know, let's exchange contact information. I'd love to learn from you. See that? It's very non-threatening. You want to meet network marketers? Hang out at a Starbucks. Especially down. Throughout the day, any Starbucks running. Right, Javier? Yep. You will find network marketers. I actually got somebody from Primera to sit over with us. Nice, exactly. Good job, congratulations. Did you meet him at a Starbucks? Yeah, I ran into him at Starbucks. Yeah. From, uh, high school. Yeah. Happens all the time, man. I ask network marketers. When I meet network marketers, I'm going to give you a little tip on network marketers. I, when I meet network marketers, I, I ask them what company they're with. They ask me what company they're with. I'm with it. And if the conversation's going good and I see an opening, right? If they're like closed off, I don't force the issue. You know what I mean? I build rapport with them and I keep in touch with them eventually, I'm gonna get them, right? But I'll ask them, I'll say things like, hey, well, well let me ask you something. You know, how long you been with the company? Oh, whatever, Sam. Well, let, let me ask you another question. Are you like married to, let's say, Prince Primerica? Are you like married to Primerica or do you keep your income options open or is that like all you want to focus on? Straight up, that's black and white. Yeah. They're either open or they're not. They're either married to their company, like don't talk to me about nothing else, or they're like, hey, man, I like to network. I keep my options open. Okay, perfect. Why don't we exchange contact information? And if they ask me, I'm like, I'm always open. Let's sit down and talk. Let's have a coffee. You know what I mean? And then guess what? When I have a coffee, what do I do? Show the plan. I show the plan, man. Because I'm networking on purpose. And guess what? That guy goes on my list. I'm going on my list. If that guy's not ready to sign up, he's still on my list. I follow up with him from time to time. If you plan on doing this for the next couple of years and becoming a millionaire, or even not just not a millionaire, a hundred thousand, right? Guess what you want to do? Show the plan, and what you want to do is network on purpose. Who plans on being here in two years? Guess what? You're gonna meet some people here right now that you're gonna recruit in a year. But some people you're gonna recruit in a year because you're gonna get better. You're gonna recruit higher quality people with networks. You'll recruit a network marketer that bring in thirty people his first month, a hundred people his first month. Why? Because you started growing. Then you remember the old days. Man, I remember when we grew one person at a time. <laughs> then we got started getting a little bit of addition. Then we started getting a little bit of multipl multiplication. Then we started getting multiplication, and then we get leaders. Like We got two leaders this month that brought 50 people each. You're going to say stuff like that. Yeah. 50 people each their first month. You guys see what I'm talking about? But that's never going to happen if you don't give it the time and you're not networking on purpose you're not becoming a professional. You have to go out there and make it a habit of becoming a professional. So, quick question. When, um, so, like, let's say you meet a networker, right? This has happened to me a few times. Um, and they say, yeah, like, I'm open. And they'll say, oh, yeah, I'll go to your meeting or I'll go to your event. And I want you to come to mine as well. Even that's a per that's a good question. That's a prefer personal preference. I personally, I actually rather enjoy going to the meetings. Okay. So, I would tell you, that's cool with me. I would do it. You see what I'm saying? Back when I was with another company, a healthy coffee company, I was the number one guy in the company. I couldn't do something like that. Because I was the number one guy in the face of the company. There's no way somebody could have saw me in another company, remember Chris? And then like, I'd get in trouble. But I could do that now. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I would personally tell the guy, hey, I'm open with that, but I would always try to get them to come to mine first. Okay. Because here's the thing, they come to yours first and they like it that much, they be like, I forget that, don't go to mine. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But if anything, you go over there and you know, you'll meet people and stuff, they'll ask you for business cards, you give them business cards, and, I wouldn't go to another company's event and try to network on purpose because they frown yeah. upon that. Like if anybody comes here trying to get you guys numbers, you guys need to put a stop to that. Yeah. Huh? Like Jerome just tearing up. Tearing up his page. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Hey, t tell him to come sit over here that there's some seats of you. So, okay, guys, human behavior. There's 27% of the of the of the population. We talk about this all the time. Are unmotivatable. Spend zero time with those people. You identify them right away. You give them no time. 60% are motivatable. Here's where the majority of you guys are. Nobody in this room is a 27%er because you wouldn't even be here. You wouldn't have made it this far. You wouldn't have made the cut. You know what I'm saying? But 60% of the people, this here, guys, is where the majority of this room is. 60% are here. They're motivatable. They're motivated tonight, maybe tomorrow. But then by Thursday, they forget that motivation. Or we're talking about bringing guests tomorrow. Their guest cancels, then they say, I will not show up. If, if, if you have that mentality, there's one right there. If you have that mentality, you're definitely a motivator. Remember, everybody repeat after me. Act as if. Who would like to be a 10 or 3%? Raise your hand. Say I. Okay, check it out. 
you got to start acting like a 10 percenter right now. Yeah. Whenever you start saying, I don't want to make that many phone calls, or I have a guest that, that, that canceled on me, and you're considering not going out, you're telling yourself, I'm a 60 percenter. Because a 10 percenter would never consider not showing up. Yeah. You see what I'm talking about? Yeah. So guess what? Even if you know you're a 60 percenter, act as if you're a 10 percenter. Get up and do it. Anybody ever go to the gym and they didn't feel like going to the gym and they felt real good because they went? Yeah. Yeah. You just did it. There's some times where I'm like, I really don't want to go. And I'm getting my stuff. I get my gym and I get in my car and I just drive. Yep. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> then you realize, man, that's good. Right? That's Then eventually that becomes a habit. Remember what we say all the time. Habits. Bad habits and good habits attract a, a flock of their relatives. When you start creating those good habits, you start developing other good habits. And it's, it becomes easier to have them. Same thing with the bad habits. We call them the errors in judgment. So 60% of people are, are motivatable. Here's how they are. Up and down, you give them two chances. I get somebody to think. They fall a little bit. They get a little discouraged because somebody quit, because somebody uh, uh, told them that they were going to show up, they didn't show up. I help them, I coach them, I let them know this part. That's why the fast start training is so important. Yeah. If you sign somebody up and you don't do the game plan interview, <laughs> fast start training with them, where you are managing their expectations, you're training them, find out their why, what they're motivated about. This is all in the basic training, guys. The fast start booklet, by the way, Chris, is almost done. Thanks, okay. So, so yeah, it's going to be phenomenal. That one, is about, trust me, guys, you guys just got to give us time. It's going to get even better. The system's going to get ridiculous. So here's the thing, guys. When you got this guy... You sign him up. That's why you got to sit down with him within 24 to 48 hours. I prefer 24 hours. Let's say I, I sign up Nate. I get together with Nate. And then what do we do? We do a game plan interview, fast start training. So we find out his why, what he's willing to give up, his list. I let him know. We got to focus on the 710. Remember the 710? Yeah. Yeah. Who's done the 710? Raise your hand if you've done the 710. Okay, great. That means in your first seven days or in the next seven days, so even if you're not me, it doesn't matter. In the next seven days, he just signed you up. Let's say, let's say for instance, it's Nate or, or anybody. Doesn't matter. Let's say it's my brother. I signed up my brother. In the next seven days, you got to put me in front of 10 people. Out of 10, but, but to get 10 people, you're going to have to invite about 20 to 30 people. Right. I'm managing his expectations. See, when I'm doing that, here's what happens. When people tell him no or people flake, I told him ahead of time. So you know, part of the business. Yeah. But if you don't do that with your people, you mess around and you're lazy with your people. They're not going to know that that's normal. So when that happens to them, they're going to get discouraged. Easily. Some people get discouraged and that's it. They're gone. Never hear from them again. But it could have been the difference between keeping them and not keeping them. Between, between them going F3 and F4 and beyond, by you doing that little step could have been the major difference. Because some people are going to be like, well, it sucks, but hey, man, JC said <laughs> that some people are not you are gonna cancel. I gotta invite twenty to thirty people for ten to show up. And out of ten that show up, I'm not gonna sign up all ten. I'm gonna sign up about three to five. And we show them the business the right way. Right? Which bring it up to this event is showing people the right way. That little thing right there will help you recruit more people. Yeah. And it'll help you keep more people. You have to look guys, there's always gonna be people coming in, people going out. You gotta have a bigger door, people coming in, smaller door, people going out. That's one little tip that I can give you that's going to help you keep more people in. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. That's so great. By, by the way, James, is that door open for the AC? No. Open it, yeah, please. So you got to make sure that you keep your people in. So you're the motivated, be motivatable. I give them two chances. They fall, I help them pick them up. They fall, I help them pick them up. They fall a third time, bro. Calls are there. System's there. I can't babysit you. I'm not a babysitter. I'm a businessman. Matter of fact, I'm not a businessman. I'm a business. Man. Man. <laughs> <laughs> what's up. I told Jay-Z that a couple years ago, man. This guy took it from me. <laughs> Isn't that pretty bad cold, though? Yeah. I'm not a businessman. I'm a business, man. Come on, man. <laughs> That's badass. I, I, I don't know about you guys. That's badass. They're the 10 percent of guys are the motivated people. These are self-motivated. These are the guys and girls that show up regardless. Yeah. They're doing it until they're doing it until they become three percenters. They're doing it until they become six and seven figure earners. You don't gotta tell them to show up. They show up. You don't gotta tell them to get on. Look, I got a list and I reviewed that list before I, I did this training. Who was on Sunday's call? Raise your hand if you were on Sunday's call. 
That's it. Every Sunday at 7 p.m., we have a leadership training call. I highly encourage you to get on the call. Now, I get it, guys. Sometimes we're with our families. I get that. I've missed a call here and there. Not recently. Actually, not. I don't think. I think one time since I didn't wake up now, I missed that call. I had like a family function that I couldn't get out of. I had somebody to the call. You have the number? Or I'm a, yeah, good. I'll, I'll put the number up right now. Man. Matter of fact, somebody got the number? 712? Somebody get the number for me? So, Sunday, 7 p.m., I recommend you get on the call and you get your entire team on the call. Same thing. It's real estate. you got to have more lines from your team on there. That should be your mentality. Showing the planet, taking up more real estate. You guys see what I'm talking about? 712. Okay. 712. 432. 432. 3022. 3022. 10. 891 841 845. 845. 845. 845. 845. 845. 845. 845. 845. 845. 845. 845. 845. 845. 845. 845. 845. 845. Why? We want to make it simple. Now, when they go on CD, it doesn't mean that you don't get all the calls because they're going to be new calls. You're going to get the CDs for old calls. You want to get these. The reason why we do is this. We want to give you guys all the personal development, all the training for you to have the best shot of success for you to listen to all the time. Today, all I was listening to all day was personal development. When I picked you up, that was it. What was it? What was it? We get in my car at the same time, turn on my car, and personal development is playing. Can we agree? It's not like I put it all the time. It's here. Let me you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it was already playing. Because I'm listening to that stuff. Like my son has probably heard a lot of hours of personal development already. You know what I'm saying? Because I turn it on. I, when I go home at night, I'm brushing my teeth. I'm listening to a millionaire training me. You see what I'm talking about? Those are the differences. I told Jennifer that they were driving. I'm listening to that stuff. I'm like, this is why it's not hard. Because no, I guarantee you, most people that are driving around, they're not listening to the personal development. They're listening to the radio. Yep. They're listening to some other rich guy on, on, on the radio. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. Yeah. It's not making them any money. Those are the difference. So these trainings that we have, we're going to put them in CDs. And you're going to be, be able to have them and listen to them all the time. So we're going to have more and more trainers on there that you're going to have different styles of training. There. All right, guys. Then the three percenters are the motivators. These are the people that cause other people to do stuff, that inspire other people to do things. Though, here's the thing. You want to take people from the 60%? To the 10% bracket and to the 3% bracket. Simple. In this in this comp plan, in this comp plan, if you got four real 10 percenters, you're done. You're like a multiple six-figure earner. If you got four real 10 percenters on three different legs at least, you are done, my friend. Think about what I just said. Yeah. If you find four real people that are really 10 percenters, you are done. If you find about two or three three percenters, forget about it. Yep. But if you don't become a 10 percenter or a three percenter yourself, it's like you're playing the lottery. Of course it could happen. You could get lucky. Does that make sense, guys? You could get lucky and get like a stud. <laughs> then another, you could get lucky, but the chances of that are slim to none. Slim just left. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> 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 Does that make sense? Yes. So 3%. Okay, recruiting tips. So there's a mindset of eight tips. You can't say the right thing to the wrong person, and you can't say the wrong thing to the right person. Uh, most of their of recruiting guys is timing. Yeah. I say it all the time. You got somebody that just got a job, a brand new job, they might be like, hey man, I just got a raise, I just got a new job, I'm stoked. No way. That's why they're not. But remember, every three months, people go through something major in their life. So they change. That's why you got to follow up. Remember, write this down and ingrain it in your head. I heard this for the first time in 2003. Fortune is in the follow-up. It says prospecting is everything, but fortune is in the follow-up. Yeah. The fortune is in the follow-up. The more you say, the more they judge. The less you say, the less they judge. So when you're inviting, we talk about a basic training. You don't say a whole lot. I call somebody, hey, Jonathan, I met a couple guys that are interested in, that, 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 uh, I met a couple guys that are making a ton of money. If I told you, you wouldn't even believe me. 
They're expanding in the area. They're looking for a couple of sharp guys like you and I. They're looking for two or three sharp guys interested in making an extra $100,000 a year, bro. Are you open? I've got an appointment to meet with them tomorrow, 7 o'clock in Downey. What's tomorrow at 7 o'clock in Downey? Meeting. Meeting. But I don't make it seem like it's a meeting. I make it seem like it's something exclusive. See what I'm talking about? I don't say, oh, I got this meeting. It's every Wednesday and every Monday. For the next 52 weeks, let me know when you come in. <laughs> See what I'm talking about? Yeah. They're like, why? Whatever. I'll make it when I make it. It's exclusive. If, if he doesn't make it, they like, talk to him again on Thursday. Hey, man, how'd that meeting go? Oh, bro, we found two of the three. Things are going crazy, man. We'll find the next one in the next day or two. What's up with you? Curiosity will help you make a lot of money. So I build that curiosity in him. Right? So that's just one way. To, but I, I'm not saying much. What's it about? It's about making a ton of money, man. It's 90% visual. If you're interested, you're interested. If you're not interested, bro, no big deal, man. We're only looking for two to three people. It's really not a big deal. You know what I mean? Maybe Alan. Alan's the next guy on, 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 on my list to call. Because I know Alan is hungry, bro. Does that make sense, guys? Mm -hmm. I mean, he's hungry. He's a tall dude all the time. Bet you that guy can eat. <laughs> so can I. That's cool. <laughs> People will be more impressed by the height of your enthusiasm than the depth of your knowledge. When you call people, you want to be enthusiastic. Okay? Successful value is based on timing, not talent. Spend one minute with 100 people, not 100 minutes with one person. When you're inviting people, remember, in your inviting, if you're a professional, you should be inviting seriously. What do I mean by that? Spend an hour or two hours aside to make phone calls. When I used to sell real estate, I used to get in at 8 in the morning. And at 8 in the morning, we used to make phone calls. Then I used to show properties. But from 4 to 8, I was calling people. Calling people, calling people, calling people, calling people, and setting up mainly appointments for the weekends to show on Saturdays and Sundays. Every day, throughout the whole day, but especially four to eight, was when people started getting home. I was calling. People. Here's what we used to do: we used to do real estate different. We used to have signs because we had a system, right? So we actually used to make fairly good money, especially Billy. The, 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 you know, I, I was a buyer's agent for somebody, so he paid me a smaller split, but he gave me all the leads. You know what I'm saying? So here's what we used to do: we used to put signs up on on. Um, like uh, open houses, uh, I mean, uh, houses for sale, and he used to say, uh, he used to have an 800 number, first of all, because people are more likely to call an 800 number to get free, pre recorded information about the house. So they knew, I'm not going to call and get pitched by a real estate agent. I'm going to just call and get free information. But we had a system that used to capture their lead. So guess what? We used to get a bunch of these. We used to capture their leads, and we had a gang of calls to make, and it was all interested in home buyers. We weren't just cold calling somebody that's not thinking of buying a house. We're calling somebody that called to get information on a house. Hey, I'm seeing that you called to take a look at, you know, 8043 Second Street. You know, my name is JC right now with Keller Williams Real Estate, blah, blah, blah. And I used to do four hours, at least, nothing but phone calls, five days a week. That Why? Because I was a professional, and we sold a lot of houses. I used to sell, like, in my prime, three to five houses a month. But I used to only make a 35% split. But still, that's still a really good. And all the leads were given to me. I didn't pay nothing for marketing. The guy did all the marketing for me. Only paid me 35%. See what I'm saying? And he had a couple of buyer's agents. Guy's a stud. Guess what, guess what that guy's background is? Exactly. Isn't that interesting? You could apply the stuff that you learn here. He, he knew systems make money. Yeah. I gotta be I gotta have my real estate system driven real estate business. He was one of my uplines. You guys remember the story that I told you guys that I had a whole meeting and my even my mom and my two brothers didn't show up? And I had my upline there. That was my upline, that guy. That's my upline. See, all the stories connect. You guys know as, as we go, you guys will hear a lot of these stories. Anyways, guys, back style story sell. Professional sword amateurs convinced. Amateurs try to convince somebody to take advantage of an opportunity. Remember, we're looking for the four aces and a deck of cards. Whoever finds them first makes the most money. Professional or sorted. Not interested, not interested, not interested. You need convincing, you're crazy, man. Now you gotta convince me to join my business. Sort, sort, sort. If you're interested, great, let's go to work. Amateurs convince professional owners. Guys, do you guys realize what is the resources that we need in this business? People. If you have a print shop, what are the resources you need at a print shop? Paper. Ink, paper, right? If you have a construction company, what are your resources? 
More tools, all that stuff. Our resources are people. Do you guys realize that there's more people being born than that there's more people being born than money being printed? We have the people. Oh yeah, just go and freaking talk to them. Yeah. See what I'm talking about? Your resources, people. And people right now are looking for an opportunity. Are people making enough money to pay the bills or not? No. 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 Guess what? It's like it's raining and we're selling them rubbers. Yeah. <laughs> Take advantage of it. Yeah. Like somebody, man, I'm broke. We're in Seattle. It rains 90% of the time. And I got an umbrella business. You, why are you broke? Because you're not working. Think about it. The only reason why you should be broke and it's raining, it's pouring rain, and you're sending brothers, it's because your butt is not working. Can we agree? Yes. yes. Just got to talk to people, man. This, this is it. The more you do it, the better and more comfortable you get. And then the more your list gets bigger. It's simple, man. We already mentioned this. They paid you $100,000 to talk to 100 people a day. You would do it for 100000 But in a year, you would create a minimum of $100,000 a year business. Minimum. Then the second year, you go to a quarter million. But you'd be stuck at 100000 if you had a job. Some will, some won't, some will wait, so what, who's next? Doesn't matter. Anytime you want to do something and asking for what you want is often a big thing, you've got to be willing to be a little terrified. You don't have to give in to the fear, but you have to be willing to feel it. Think of the things you'd like to do. Ask your boss for a raise, Leave the job you hate, turn a work acquaintance into a friend, or ask some friends to take a look at your new business opportunity. Now, instead of saying, I'm afraid to do one of these things, figure out how you're scaring yourself. Make a statement that recognizes that feeling. Your statement will be something such as, I want to ask my boss for a raise, and I scare myself by imagining he'll say no or get mad at me for asking. Here's another example. I want to show my friends my new business opportunity, and I scare myself by imagining that they'll think I'm only after their money. You see how it works? Acknowledge that you are creating your fear, and you'll start to triumph over it. You guys know what that is? Yeah, I can. The author of um, Chicken Soup for Chicken soup the Soul. Didn't he also come out in uh, The Secret? Yeah. 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 Guys are stuck. Hi right, guys, we talked about this before. Your fives, your tens, and your ones. Very simple. Your ones, you look up to them, you tell them what to do. And you've been through this training many times. We're going to reasonably. Your peers, there's different invitations. There's a couple of them that I that, that, that I love. I Look, guys, I call a lot of my friends, and I ask them straight up. Like, let's say I already talked to them about waking up now. I call them again, and I'm like, let's say it's Sebastian. Sebastian, what's up, brother? Uh, nothing much. Nothing much. Let's go. What's up, bro? <laughs> Well, listen, the reason why I'm calling you the best is, uh, you know that I'm rocking with Wake Up Now. You know, things are absolutely blowing up. I know I already told you about it, but I really think you should take a second look at what we're doing, bro, because things are going bananas. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. yeah Straight yeah. up, I'm fo- there's a follow-up call. I'm always calling people to recruit them until they tell me, leave me alone. I don't want nothing to do with your business. I'm going to keep calling them every yeah. couple weeks or couple months. Mm-hmm. At the very least, sometimes every week I call them. I got my friend Ivan. He's been working for him for years. He's, he's got a position, but he's not working the business. I'm a, I was supposed to call him today. I don't know. I completely crossed my mind. Right? So guess what? I'm going to call him tomorrow. I call him. I'm like, hey, bro, what's up? He, he's doing another company, right? I'm going to call him. I'm going to say, hey, man, how are things going with that company? Listen, I'm sure you know things are going good in your chat. And if, if, if you like you know, the money you're making, you're doing good, I don't want to interrupt you. But in case you're not, bro, I really think you should take a second look at what we're doing, man. I'll help you. I'll personally work with you. Have you seen my videos on Facebook from our events? And any one of you guys can say that. Like, we put videos all the time. You can put that video. Bro, do you think that happens on accident? It doesn't happen on accident, man. People are making money. You guys should get that testimonial video. Send it to people on a private message. Check out how many people just that one night, bro, where they had the part of three positions. Making between, and I say between 600 and 1,200 bucks. The reason why is because we got couples that combined. They're making, you know, they got about two pounds three positions. They're making 600 bucks each. Does that make sense, guys? <laughs> so... So when I say that, I'm, I'm just following up with them, man. Think about if you did that constantly for an entire year, you would recruit so many more people just doing that. So one of my favorite invites is, because remember, I attract high, like, like, like uh, ambitious people, entrepreneur-minded people. If you knew 20 years ago what you know now about Microsoft and you could have invested, would you have done it? Yes. Yes. 
I got something bigger than that. We got to meet, bro. That's a rhetorical question. But if you're drawing out your life vest, would you grab it? Yes. Great. Come and check out the vest. I got something more important than that. We got to meet. Right? Yeah. I know the answer to the question, unless the guy's being dumb. In that case, I identified probably 27%. Or I don't want anything to do with him anyways. Yeah. Next. <laughs> See what I'm talking about? Yep. It doesn't matter. I just call him. I'm blunt. People ask me, well, is this one of those pyramid things? Well, I don't know what you mean about a pyramid thing, but this is network marketing. Are you open to network marketing? Straight up. Yeah. I'm not hiding it because here's the thing: people will respect that you're so upfront and they'll notice your posture. And, oh, I can't mess with this person. Yeah. A lot of times, people will mess with you because they sense weak posture. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Straight up. <clears throat> so there's a lot of different ways, and then you know we get into the if I could, would you? That's a great invite. You just have to go out there and do it. Who cares if you mess it up? Call them up again in a couple of weeks. Hey, man, things are rocking. That's why you want to rank it fast. You want to work your tail off to rank it fast so you can have those stories to follow up with. Hey, man, when I called you, you know, I barely started, hadn't made any money. I rank it fast twice. I went to the director's reposition where my business was free. Now I'm making an extra 600 bucks a month. Hey, man, that might not be a lot of money, but guess what? It's helping me pay my car. Now, now, eventually, I'll be at the $6,000 a month mark, and eventually, I'll be at the $60,000 a month mark, and I'm going to call you to prove to you that, obviously, it worked, but I love you. That's what I'm calling you right now. That's 600 bucks a month, man. I can help you get there. I need to help 7 to 10 people get there because I want to get to the $2,700 a month mark. i like for one of those 7 to 10 to be you. Are you open or not? No, I'm not open. Sounds good, bro. You mind if I keep your phone from time to time? Yeah, sure. No, whatever. Boom, next. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. If I set up an hour report, I'm like, hey, man, I'm going to make my phone. Then guess what you're going to do? As you, you, you're being productive, you're making phone calls, you feel good about yourself after those phone calls. Of course. Because you realize, hey, man, I did it. I invested in my business, and I got better. I made phone calls. I made progress. Then you feel good. Then you start to attract good things. That's the way the law of attraction works. You have to be in action. Motion creates emotion. Yep. You have to always be in action. Your tense, help, favor, and opinion. We've got into that a lot of times. Help, favor, and opinion. Make it a point to go out there and prospect a couple of people a day. Two people a day. Get, get your workout partner and say, hey, you know what, this Saturday and Sunday, let's go to Serena's Mall. Next Sunday, you know, next uh, Saturday we'll go to Serena's Mall. Sunday we'll go to uh, whatever, Lakewood Mall. And we're not leaving that mall until we got 10 numbers each or, or 30 no's, minimum. We, gotta eat. we can't leave till we get 30 no's. I don't care how many yeses you get. How many numbers you get doesn't matter. We're not going to focus on the result. We're going to focus on the activity. Yep. We're not going to leave till we get 50 no's each, bro. Deal? Deal. Let's go. If he doesn't make it, hey, I need a new workout for him, bro. You want to give me an excuse? All excuse, sir. I'm doing this to go to the top. I'm doing this for my family. And I'm not going to, with all due respect, bro, I'm not going to let you hold me back, man. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Trust me, man. You're going to run into people that they're, they're going to give you every damn excuse. Crazy, man. Here's how you want to hit a home run. When you're prospecting, okay, when you set up a one-on-one, -on -one, okay, or a two-on-one, -on -one, obviously, like two-on-one -on -one means you and, you know, your upline meet up with someone and show them the business, maybe at Starbucks, or they see the website presentation, right? Okay, then... You, you, you do a conference call if needed. This is where you want to put if needed. You do a three-way call or a conference call to answer the person's questions. Okay? Open house, home meeting. Okay? So here what you're doing is you're setting, sorry, you're setting up the appointment. Okay? Then the second one is if you need a three-way call, you set up a three-way call. If the person has a couple of questions that you can't answer, set up a three-way call with one of your upline sponsors. Third basis, you get them to the event. You show the plan. And then you get them to, what does it say there? Yeah, one university. One university. You get them to training. That's a home run. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. Yep. You pick the interest the right way, okay? If you need a three-year call, you set up a three-year call. Then you show the plan. If after showing the plan, they got a couple questions, you get a three-way conversation, a three-way call to get their questions answered, right? Then you sign them up and you get them to training. You get them plugged into training. Okay. This is an edification process. So 
when I'm setting up appointments, guys, or like let's say just sign up and I'm gonna, I'm about to get an appointment with him to sit down with, with Mr. Guzman. So so Mr. Guzman can answer his questions, right? So let's say I got Jonathan. I'm like, listen, Jonathan, see, between me and my prospect, Jonathan, there's trust, but there's not really respect when it comes to the business. That makes sense, guys. Yeah. Let's say we went to high school together, he's gonna be like, who is this? You know, Mr. You know, why are you telling me about making more money? We just graduated together. I know you make a lot of money. <laughs> but you don't make it about you. You're not the deal. So here's what I say. All right, bro, here's the deal. My expert, I'm not going to say my expert, right? <laughs> the gentleman that I'm working with says is Chris, right? I'm going to refer to him as Mr. Guzman. Mr. Guzman, he's going to be in, in, in the meeting. This guy's not too stuck, bro. His first month, this guy is the, 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 the founder four position. Absolutely rocking, man. Let me see if I can get a couple minutes of his time. I'm building my credibility with him. He's teaching me a lot. This guy's an absolute champion. He'll show you how to make a lot of money because he knows how to do that. You know what I mean? What am I doing? I'm building somebody else up. You want to make them seem like they glow in the dark and they walk on water. You know what I'm saying? Because then he knows it's not about me. Like, it's not about the dude that I went to high school together. Because you don't make no money, bro. We just graduated. I know you don't make no money. But, dude. I'm talking to him about somebody else. Then I build that edification up. Now, what I'm doing is I'm building respect between my prospect and the expert. Edification. Edification simply means talking highly about something or someone. Edification will make you a lot of money. Same thing when you set up an appointment at Starbucks. If you don't edify, the people are going to be looking at the phone. They're going to be distracted. Don't ever set up an appointment with your upline and don't edify. If your prospect shows up late, you probably didn't edify. I tell people, too, our appointment is at 7. Me and you, we got to be there minimum the latest. At 645. Because I want to get there before Mr. Guzman shows up, before Mr. Rangel shows up, before Mr. Lozano shows up, before Mr. Ponce shows up. Because I'm building my credibility with this guy. And he's teaching me how to make a ton of money. So don't make me look bad. You see what I'm talking about? Where they're like, damn. Okay? All right. Any questions on that, by the way? Yeah. Oh, this is good. No? Okay. All right, guys. So just in case you haven't convinced yourself of the facts yet, allow me to share some statistics with you. That should scare the dick. How do you write this, by the way? That's not my writing. <laughs> Living daylights out of these. Right? 48% of people never follow up with a prospect. 25% of sales people make a second contact, then stop. 12% of sales people only make three contacts and then stop. We've said this before. Okay. It's staggering discovery, but only 10% of businesses make more than three contacts. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, it means that they're losing a small fortune. Here's why. 2% of sales are made in the first contact. Only 2%. Yeah. 3% of sales are made in the second contact. 5% are made on the third. 10% are made on the fourth. And 80% are made on the fifth contact. Why do you think we say... Prospecting is everything but purchase in the yep. follow-up. Most people, guys, 95% of you guys have a bunch of people that you call one time you ever followed up with. Them. Mm-hmm. You could have already been the next rank if you would have done that. Um, you know, I would like to and they're kind of interested about because I've tried, and they're like, why are you going to the meeting? So what do I say to Okay, well, well, don't don't necessarily set up a meeting. Set up to come here, but you can set up to meet up at a Starbucks. But they're really keen, and they're like, I already know what it is. If that's the case, then it's not interesting. The guy's not interested. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I would ask him straight up. I would say, hey, well, well, let me ask you something. Did you like what you saw? Did you see a way to make some money? Or, or, or not at all? Straight up. Either yes or no. If they say... Yes, I actually am open. You know what? I think you need to see it for a second time. You know what I mean? Maybe we, we could get a personal conversation with you and one of the top guys in the company to ask you a question. But if, here's the thing. If they're not interested, they're going to tell you right there because you're putting them on the spot. I've asked people, if you, hey, listen, if you if you don't want me to t- talk to you about this business, I'm very excited. That's why I'm talking to you about it a couple of times. If you're not interested, it's cool. Just let me know. I don't want to waste your time and I don't want to waste mine. They're like, you know what, bro? The business is not for me. Hey, you know what? Thank you for letting me know. And they're saving you time. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? But if you see it, it's for somebody that that you know. <laughs> you know? Say it again? Well, if it's not for you, maybe you know somebody else that you'd like to refer. Exactly. Yeah, ask them for a referral. Act, doesn't that actually kind of make them feel good if they can, if they say no, but then they can offer? Yeah. 
So, yeah, exactly. As we talked about it earlier. Great point. Ask for a referral. Hey, well, well listen, if this is not for you, who do you know that's interested in making some extra money? Do you mind referring me to a couple of people that might be interested in making some extra money? Make some phone calls. Add that to your phone calls. Remember, some people, they just won't. Some people, here's what's going to happen. After, you know, they say that, they're going to see you still in the business. A lot of people, when they see that you're in the business three months from now, six months from now, a year from now, they're going to be like, dude, you're still doing that? That's terrible. It must be working. Then all of a sudden, they're interested to speak once again. And they'll want to see it again, and then they're going to sign up back. Most people are like this, guys. Most people that, that say no, I believe, I personally believe that most people that say no are saying no. Just to see what if you you're going to slap, that it's going to work. Mm -hmm. they, but, but they're like this. Oh, I, I don't know about that thing, bro. Or you know what? I don't think it's for me. But they're like, you're, you're moving forward. Turn the lights, please. You're moving forward, and then they're moving forward with you. They're not staying that far tonight. <laughs> yeah. Trust me. You think they're not looking at your Facebook post? Heck yeah, yeah man. And you got to be positive all the time. Remember, perception is everything. How's, it, how's, there, how's business? Man, you wouldn't believe me if I told you, man. It's going incredible. You know what I'm saying? And then they see that you still are excited. See, I see even in this room, I see people that start like this. Boom, they're excited. They're 100% wake up now. It's like they got a wake up now tattoo. Like, they're just talking. They're like, That's my chest. A month goes by, you don't even post nothing. And that's why you're not having the results. You can't go to the gym for one month and expect to get in shape. You guys realize that? It's got to be the same thing in this business. You, does that make sense, guys? Yes. Same thing. So you have to be constantly. Then after a while, they realize, hey, man. And then they keep following you, following your progress. Then before you know it, they're like, hey, you know what, man? A little week without thing going. And now you have a little bit more posture. You have a little bit more experience. So you're leaving 90% of your income on the table for someone else to come along with them. A lot of people, they're not going to be interested in that. They're not. It's just how it is. Now, from time to time, some people I know, I, I'm not even, because they're so negative, I, I'm never going to hit them about it. But if they ask me about it, yeah, then I'll tell them. But I'm, my posture is going to be different when I talk. Here's something that one of my mentors taught me a long time ago. I mentioned that mentor in the blog uh, that I wrote today. He taught me how to do it like this, how to, a prospecting system where you buy these cards, these index cards in different colors, and it's got the tags here. So when you prospect to the people, January, February, March, and then it's got a bunch of lines to what you like literally put. Let's say today, what's the day, 23rd? Yeah. Let's say the 23rd, and I write down. Let's say I met Javier today at Starbucks. Javier made a point, this is the 23rd, I put the time and location. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Then I follow up with them. So like, let's say I call him tomorrow. He says, you know what, I'm going on vacation till next month. I'll move it to the October tab. Then in October, I'm just going to, so I'll put, like, on, on the card, I'll actually put, follow up October 1st. So when I get into October, I open up the October ones, and he's there. Oh, that's right, I'm in a Starbucks. Then I'm calling him. Then I write notes. Then I write notes. I, I hope I can still find, I haven't done this in a while, actually, but it actually worked very, very good for me. Now I use my phone, but this actually was very good. And we used to have a lot of them. So that's prospects that you got right there, man. It's pretty cool to add that up. So that, that actually, I've done this before for sure. I, I'm not going to tell you that I do it right now, because I don't. I do it with my cell phone. And, right? But this will probably help me get more organized, so I'm probably going to do this again. And, and I bought the little box. You can buy all of that at Office Depot. And don't we get a discount on that? You do get a discount on that. And guess what? It's a text writer. <laughs> you know, pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> so check it out. The power of two a day, guys. If it's just one of you guys, you're prospecting two people a day, that's 10 people a week, 40 people a month, and 480 people a year. We're talking about five days a week. We're not even talking about Saturdays and Sundays. So check it out. What if you got 10 VIP agents on your team doing a two a day? It's 20 people a day, 100 a week, 400 a month, 400 prospects a month. Just 10 people in your organization doing the two of these. Would that be pretty good, guys? Yeah. James, by the way, are you recording in 15 minute increments? Yeah. Okay. And then 100 VAP agents on your organization doing two of these. That's obviously when your team starts getting bigger. But if you got 100 people doing that, it's 200 dollars. 200.
thousand a week, four thousand a month, forty eight thousand dollars, forty eight thousand a year. Damn. And you'll make way more than forty thousand bucks a year. Probably be at forty thousand a month. So, questions or answers? Okay. Seven important reminders about asking questions. Whoever has the questions first controls the conversation. Whenever you do a presentation, so like after a presentation, don't get up and leave outside with your prospects. Yeah. You turn your seat around, face your prospect, and ask them a closing question. Did you see a way for you? Everybody repeat after me. Did, Did you, you see, see a way, a way? <laughs> <laughs> for you to make some money with us? <laughs> see, they're just going to answer that. They're going to say yes or no. You know how we do the closing A, B, and C? Yeah. Everybody repeat after me. Where did you see yourself? Where did you see yourself? A, B, or C? A, B, or C. A, B, or C. Who could do that? Yes. All day. Some people don't want to ask those questions. You know why? Because you're like embarrassed or afraid to ask a question. Is a person really going to think like you're a bad person because you're asking that question? No. you got to get outside your comfort zone. Follow the system. Nate sees a presentation. I'm sitting next to Nate. He's my prospect. I turn to him. Nate, did you see a way for you to make some money with this? Yes. Great. Let's sign you up. Have your applications ready and fill out the application for the person. GTC. If they're ready, yeah. If they're ready to sign up, don't ask, ask no more questions. You just sign them up. A lot of people make the mistake that <laughs> they, the person's ready to sign up, then, oh, that's great, bro, because look, man, in the tax part, he didn't talk about this part. <laughs> what? <laughs> Shut up. Get them in the system. They show them when you're setting up his tax spot. You will you some of you guys will literally, if you do that, will talk your way out of an e Yeah. <laughs> Asking questions helps build the bridge. Okay? Uh, getting people in the yes mode will help you move them in the right direction. So when it comes to asking questions, builds a bridge. Ask them. We just asked some questions. Did you see a way for you to make some money with us? Yes. Right? Yes. Okay, great. Let's get you started. Well, you know what? I've got a couple questions. Okay, great. You got a couple questions? You know, what course do you have? Well, you know, uh, whatever. You know what I mean? What, what are all the companies that are involved? Let's say it's a very analytical person. A Donatello. Donatello. Yeah, Donatello. Yeah. Let's say it's a, a very analytical person, right? Well, okay, that's fine. I can certainly get you that. So is that the only thing that's holding you back from getting started right now? Is that the only thing that's, get, that's holding you back from getting started today? Yes. Okay, perfect. So as soon as we answer these questions, what we'll do is we'll fill out your application. See, I'm closing them before I ask those, those questions. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. So, somebody says, I don't have the money. Ask him another question. If you if you knew how to come up with the money, how would you do it? A lot of times people don't even think about it. Well, you know what? It's because I, I don't have the money. But if you didn't know how to come up with the money, how would you do it? I'd probably ask my dad. And we should probably ask your dad. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't have the money. Can I be honest with you, bro? Yes. How long do you want to say that you don't have 100 bucks after working as long as you've been working at your job? See, I, that's why I love that question. Can I be honest with you? Yes. That means they're giving you permission, permission to punch them in the gut. <laughs> you know what I'm Can I be honest with you? Yes. How long do you want to say? Let's say, let's say Jonathan brought Angeline. Let's say Angeline brought Jonathan to me. And I never met Jonathan. And Jonathan tells me I don't have the money. Can I be honest with you, bro? Yes. How long do you want to say to a complete stranger that you just met not even an hour ago that you don't have a hundred bucks? Yeah. Exactly. That's what we got to figure out a way. You seem like a resourceful young man. I'm sure you can borrow 20 bucks from uh, uh, five people, right? But let's make it happen so you never again have to tell somebody that you don't have a hundred bucks. Welcome to the team, brother. Let's get your application filled out. I know that by tonight or tomorrow, the next 24 hours, you'll have the money. So you're pretty much in. So, hey, guys, we got a new family member. Hey. <laughs> You assume the sale, man. You see what I'm saying? By doing all of that, he's more like uh, he's more in than not. He's more than likely to come up with money than not come up with the money. See what I'm talking about? I meet with people all the time. People always introduce me to their prospects, and you guys, who's introduced me to their prospects and heard me close their prospects? Don't I ask these questions yeah. all the time? Did you see a way for, for you to make some money with us? Right? Where did you see yourself? What did you like best about what you just saw? The money. Me too. Man. When I saw it, I was. Super excited about the money. So let's get you started. You know what I mean? Have applications ready. Yeah. Don't come to the office and ask for applications. Yeah. Whose business is it? Is it my business or your business? Oh, my business. It's your business. My business, my business. Your business, your business. Guess, guess who should have their own applications? Yeah. Okay. Exactly. We, we have the office. 
You just bring your applications in your people. You bring your applications in your people, and we close them for you. You just sign on. Is that a fair trade off? Yeah. I think that's pretty fair. Be prepared, guys. For sure, be prepared. Everyone is tuned into the radio station WIIFM. What's in it for me? Asking questions will discover their, what they what they want. Okay, paint them in the picture when you're asking questions. I, especially when I'm driving people to a presentation, I like to ask them questions. Well, let me ask you something, bro. If money wasn't an option, what would you do? Like, what would your life look like if money wasn't an option? Ah, uh, they, I get them building, dream building, right? So when they see the presentation, they realize, holy crap, I could do these things that I just told this dude in the car that I would do if money was an issue. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. Okay. We have two years and one mile for a reason, to use them accordingly. So listen to the prospect. Ask them questions and then listen. And as they're telling you things, they're giving you objections equal direction. When they're giving you these objections, they're giving you direction of where to go. If you, if your prospect leaves his office and he goes outside, he's like at least 50% more likely not to get started in your business. As if you keep him sitting down. 100%. Don't make that, that, that mistake. And you know what? I take full responsibility of this. You know why? Because we haven't trained on this earlier. But we're training on it now. That's why when you guys all graduate from the university, you guys realize that you're not done after you graduate. You guys realize that, right? Yeah. Training, like, it's only once a week. If it was up to me, we train you guys every single day. When we knock on doors, when I used to knock on doors, guess we trained and practice pitched every single day. Every single day. This being once a week, like that's why we got conference calls. If once a week was enough for eight weeks, we wouldn't have conference calls. You guys see what I'm talking about? We want to do trainings after the meetings. Okay. Learn how to master form. Form means family, occupation, recreation, and money. When you're talking to people, these are the things that you want to talk about. Okay? You want to answer a question with a question. Okay? Where do you work? How long have you worked there? These are the kind of questions I like to ask people, okay? What do you like best about working at McDonald's? Working at UPS, whatever the case may be. Like, when somebody tells me, like, let's say I ask them, where do you work, bro? They say UPS. I compliment where they work to bring their guards down. You guys see what I'm talking about? You guys ever seen, I'm sure you have, a boxing match, and you got a guy, like, working the guy's body off the they're working his body to bring his hands down to eventually knock him out, hit him up, upstairs, right? Yeah. Same thing as what you're doing. So when I ask somebody, let's say they work at UPS or wherever they work, man, you know, that seems like a pretty cool job. Definitely stable. You know what I'm saying? You like it? I just compliment it. Most of the time, what they'll do is they'll knock it. They'll, they'll oh man, it, it just pays the bill. One guy told me, literally, he worked at UPS. Says, I've been trying to be, be, be a driver for years, man, and they got me unloading the trucks and stuff like that. He was unhappy with his job. Guess what? That equals direction. Now I know what direction to take them. See what I'm talking about? Yeah. On the contrary, don't be like defensive with them. Like, don't go against them. I work at EPS. Oh man, that sucks, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you doing that? Be like, well, actually, I like I like the job. Yeah. It's a good job. Yeah. Then they start protecting it. Then you just killed it. Now your chances of setting the guy up are very, very slim. Because now the guy's defending it. You gotta be a smooth operator. You know what I mean? <laughs> If I could show you a way, so like, let's, oh, okay, so let's, uh, what do you like, what do you like the best about working at where you're at, okay? So you like, you repeat what they like. What do you like the best? I like the hours. Oh, so you like the hours of working there? Yes. What do you like the least about working there, okay? If I could show you a way how to get more of what you want, whatever they told you, and avoid whatever they dislike, would you be interested? Yes. Let's say they say, oh, I like the hours, but I don't make enough money, okay? Or if I could show you how to make more money with not so many hours. Would that be something that would interest you? Yes. Okay, great. Continue to close them. Or if you haven't shown them the business, show them the business. The point is you gotta get, you want to get great at asking questions. What, so like, let's say somebody's got a couple of questions. Well, let me ask you something. What, what's stopping you right now from getting started? Make a decision today. Oh, I got to think about it. Okay, perfect. I can use feel, felt, found. Hey, I know how you feel, bro. When I first saw this for the first time, it was new. So I felt the same way. But what I found out was that the people at my job were never going to get out of debt. And the guy that was working, and the people who were working there for the longest, didn't have the lifestyle that I wanted. So I realized I had to do something new. That's what I found out. 
feel felt felt. You want to treat people with a with, with a what is it called? Like a like a suede, like a, a velvet hammer. Excuse me. You want to hit them with a velvet hammer. Like you're hitting them with the truth, stuff that hurts, but you want to do it in a way that is subtle, that they don't feel the hit so much. You know what I mean? Feel felt felt. They're like, you know what? It's because I don't have a lot of time, bro. I know exactly how you feel. I felt the same way before, but I what I realized is this: that the people that do the best in this business, people that don't have a lot of time. The reason why is because let's say you can't make it to these events, but you know some people want to make some extra money. You can always send them here. We'll take care of them for you. When they sign up, they sign up on your team. You get paid, and we did the work for you. Does that make sense? Another way of closing people that I use is this: man, I'm so glad you said that. I thought I was the only one that felt the same way. So give me an objection, somebody. I don't have a lot of time. Bro, I'm so glad you said that, man. I thought I was the only one that felt the same way. When I barely saw this for the first time, I didn't have a lot of time. But I, what I realized is that I didn't need a lot of time. I could build this business in five to ten hours. Because guess what? When I introduced my first couple of friends, let's say in my, my first three people, let's say I'm dedicating just five hours a week. And they're each dedicating five hours a week. Now I'm getting paid on 20 hours a week when I'm only working five. Now when they did the same thing, now I'm getting paid on what? Another nine times five, another 45 hours. And the people that I'm working with, they got more time than I do. So they invest the time that I don't got with my people and they put them on my team. I can say, let's say I, I got an appointment and I got some people that can make it that, that I know, but I can't make it. I can still send them here and the people are here, they're going to take care of them. Show them the business presentation, answer the question, sign them up under my team. And I got paid while I'm at work. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah. Somebody give me another objection. I don't know how to pack this. Bro, I'm so glad you said that. I thought I was the only one that felt the same way. But what I realized is that all I had to do is invite. You ever invited anybody to a party? Who said that? You ever invited anybody to a party? Because <laughs> you guys are going to think I'm cross eyed. Huh? <laughs> you ever invited anybody to a party? Yeah. You ever invited a girl out? Yeah. Exactly, bro. That's all you got to do in this business. Because think about it. This guy invited you, that guy over there presented. No, notice that? So the guy that invited you didn't show you business. All he did is invite you, friends, didn't even tell you a whole lot of get you. <laughs> so of course you can do it, bro. Does that make sense? No. Give me another object. You had a, you know. What did you say? I'm not good at calling people. You're not good at calling people? Oh, I'll show you. Let, let me see your phone. <laughs> <laughs> Some of you, uh, seriously, stupid questions like that, I answer them like that, straight up. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm not good at calling people. Let me see your phone. I'll show you. <laughs> I, like, seriously, I act like I don't know what the hell they're talking about. <laughs> And they feel dumb, like, okay. <laughs> Yeah, that's a part of having posture. Uh, uh, you uh, yes, guy, yesterday, uh, he told me yeah. that uh, you just got this job with the benefits. The benefits? Uh, yeah. What if I show you how to make double the money that you're that you're making right there, or triple the money you could pay for your own damn benefits, and you still might want to have more time freedom? Yeah. Would that right. would that interest you? <laughs> how much are your benefits? Let's say they're like, how much are your benefits? Five hundred bucks a month, three hundred bucks a month? What if I show you how to make an extra four grand a month? Would that cover those benefits? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And now, if you're closed minded, it's cool. But if you're open minded, I think that's worth 30 minutes of your time. And then you're going to owe me lunch after I show you what I show you. <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, think about it. Most people have these broke philosophies, my benefits. Seriously? <laughs> See the cap that they got? Yeah. Look, guys, let me give you guys a little story. And start an independent video for this. So stop it and record a new video for this. Okay, some things that, 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 that motivate people, that stop people from greatness are incredible. Like when somebody says, the benefits of my job, I'm like, how much are those benefits? 300, 500 bucks a month? Do you realize that you got a business where you can make double, triple, you can make thousands of dollars more than you're currently making now from home on a residual basis, but people are limited. They got that cap. Because of their benefits, they can't do it. That's pretty ridiculous. Can we agree? Yeah. Yeah. And guess what that is? That's a system that's programmed people. Here's, here's my story. If you get a little elephant, right, as a baby, they they, they, they hammer them, they, they, they tie a, a, a little rope yeah. to their leg, and they hit it on the ground, right, the stick. The elephant can't go anywhere. It's strong enough to hold him. He tries, he tries, he tries. Eventually, he doesn't even try anymore. You go to a circus. You see these big old huge elephants, bigger than this office, right? Huge. Like an elephant would not sit here, right? Probably not. 
you got that same elephant with a little twig and a little piece of rope around his leg that he could obviously break, but he doesn't even try. Because he's limited because of how he was programmed from when he was a kid. You guys realize what I'm talking about? And that's how most people get programmed. Most people are like that frog that gets boiled. You put a frog in regular water, temperature water, room temperature water, they're right there chilling. You can cook that frog. You just put up the, the you just put it up a little bit. Don't try this, brother. <laughs> Don't you guys go out and hurt any damage to the frogs, or else you ain't coming into the university here. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> might, might just be a ninja turtle and shit. Uh -huh. So check it out. You raise the temperature a little bit. Then the frog's like. <laughs> then you raise it up a little bit more. Then they're like. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little hot in here. <laughs> 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 then you turn it up some more. Before you know it, they're cooked. Done. That's how most people end up at their job. Yeah. They start. Some of you guys are going to check this out. I'm going to be real with you, man. Like I say, I'm raw like sushi. Some of you cats and girls, right? I don't know. How to, I don't know how to say it. I won't say it. Right? Some of you guys and girls, if you don't, if, if, if your wives aren't strong enough, you will quit the business. And the reason why you left, well, you didn't leave your job, but you did this in addition to your job is because you maybe didn't see a future. You you obviously wanted something more. Some people, when they don't have a strong enough wife, they're not consistent enough. Some people are gonna say. I already graduated from the university. I got to do it again. And they won't show up. It's cool because we'll have new people. Don't matter. Then the, the, the warriors will stick. They'll pay attention. Then they'll go little by little, not pay attention. Eventually, they're going to stop showing up. Little, it's a slippery slope. And I won't show up. I'll go next week. I'll do it tomorrow. Tomorrow is the most commonly used word, word by the poor. They did a study on poor people. Tomorrow is the most commonly used word that they have. Tomorrow. Anyways. You'll go and you'll go, and before you know it, you got, you're at your job again because you're waiting. It's hard to get back in. I thought of getting back in. It's like, oh my God, it's such a drag to start all over again because I lost my team because I wasn't plugged in. And eventually, you're going to end up like that little frog cook. Then, before you know it, you got people. Now they got more bills. They got more debt. They got a bigger family. They got to work more hours. And then, guess what? They're like that frog in water. They're cooked. Now they're like, shoot, if it was hard back then when I didn't have kids, when I didn't have as much debt, when I didn't have as big of a house, it's really going to be hard now. Whatever. And they stay where they are. Why? All because of decisions. The decisions that we've made in the past are exactly, we are exactly where we deserve to be. And it's because of us and only us. Not the government, not our job or our boss or the economy. It's because of us. Everybody point the finger at yourself. Say it's because of you. Watch this. I'm going to do an example with you guys. Everybody close your eyes right now. I'm going to close them too. Actually, I'm not going to close them. Make sure everybody's participating. Your <laughs> now, you're, you're at your ATM. You're going to your ATM. Visualize. You're going to practice visualization. You're going to your ATM. Put your card in. Some of you guys are not putting your card in. Put your card in. <laughs> yeah, no. Whichever one. Whichever one has more money. Exactly. Put the card in. Put in your code. Oh, one of your guys' code is all nice. <laughs> all right, check it out. Hit balance. Do you like what you see? Don't answer me. Just to ask yourself, do I like that balance? Open your eyes. That balance is there because of your decisions and nobody else's. Your balance in 12 months will be what it is. Because of the decisions you're making right now and every day. To, everybody say today. today. The only thing that exists, what tomorrow comes is going to be today. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. What the decision you make today to be here, to take notes, to apply what you learn, to take the business seriously. Not to treat it like a hundred dollar business, but to treat it like a million dollar business. The decisions that we all make today will determine how big our bank comes. How big of our lifestyle that we have. The decisions that we make. Alright guys, you can get a stuff
Objectives are doing credit. Who's sending the guys? Okay, good. Simply repeat the objections. I don't like sales. You don't like sales. Well, that's great, you know, because this is not sales. You're going to love this. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I literally have people say that. I love that one. I don't like sales. Awesome. You're going to love this. Yeah. Like, what? This looks like sales. Looks like it, but it's not. <laughs> I'm not selling you anything. I brought you here. That guy told you, you know, what we do. Right? This looks like one of those things. One of those things? What do you mean? I put it back on them. A lot of times they don't even know what the hell they're talking about. They talking about. Okay. I need to think about it. These are some of the objections. I need to think about it. What do you got to think about? Making more money? Having more time for you? What do you got to think about? Okay. Let me do some research. I'm not good at sales. We, we talked about some of these. It's not for me. What's not for you? Making more money? I just I just want to give an understanding. You know what I mean? What, what do you mean it's not for you? Repeat the question. Remember, objections equal direction. So when you repeat the question, then, then they elaborate a little bit more. Then it gives you a better direction of where you want to take the conversation. I don't have any friends. Anybody ever got that one? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I don't have any friends. Perfect way to make some new friends. Perfect excuse to make some new friends too. Not only that, guys. Can we agree that one day we're all not going to be here anymore, right? You guys realize, you guys realize that the day that we are not here anymore is going to take six people to carry that casket. You better make some friends. All you need is three people, man. You know what I mean? It takes more than that when we're gone to carry the casket. Now, if you're a really little person, you might only want to carry the casket. You know? But I don't think that applies to anybody here. I don't have the time or I'm too busy. That's perfect. Specifically designed for people that are very busy. Somebody told me that yesterday, as a matter of fact. Somebody was here. I, was, I, I don't know whose guest that was. Yeah? Uh -huh. One of you guys. So somebody had a guest. Wasn't it you that had a guest yesterday? It was, right? The guy said something about being too busy or, or something like that. I said, bro. Oh, he said between school. He worked at McDonald's, right? I remember. He said between school and between um, uh, uh, work, I don't have a lot of time. I said, perfect. It's specifically designed for busy people. Here's what I found out. People that have a lot of time, they're usually lazy. Those people are no good for this business. The people that have the most success are busy people. They're busy for a reason because they're hard workers. They get stuff done. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. No matter what, you know, you could home, overcome the adjustment. Is this like XYZ Company? I don't know. Is XYZ Company making a lot of millionaires? <laughs> if they are, yeah, it's like it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, no, nobody's making money on it. Then this is not it. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. I don't have the money. We talked about that. Is this a pyramid? We talked about that. I don't know what you mean by pyramid, but this is certainly a network marketing company. Are you familiar? Do you understand how network marketing works? Right? How much do you make? When somebody asks you that, don't lie to them. I like to tell them the truth. Obviously, right? So, well, how much do you make? Let's say I'm brand new, right? Or I'm not really making a lot of money. Or founder three, whatever. Well, you know what? I just got started with the company about a month ago. I'm going to be hitting the founder three position this month. But more importantly, it's not so much about me, it's about a lot of the people here and how much money they make. We got some people here that make a ton of money on a monthly basis that if I tell you how much it is, you know, you wouldn't you wouldn't believe it. Matter of fact, if I tell you, so what, some, what some people like to say is this, if I told you how much I make, the government considers it enticement, enticement, which is true. You're actually not supposed to in the network marketing industry tell people how much you make. You know what I mean? But not only that, I tell somebody, bro, you just saw an opportunity, and obviously, you saw some value in it. Even if I'm not making a dime, does that mean that you're not going to make a dime? If we join the gym together, does that mean that I don't get in shape, you're not going to get in shape? It's got nothing to do with it. For whoever does the business, the, the, the way it's supposed to be done, they're going to get paid. Right? Ah, uh, you could always use somebody's story. I'm not interested. If they say that they're not interested, you could go one time, like, you're not interested in making more money? You know, what, what is it that you're not interested in? Right? If they just say, oh, this, this, this is not for me, then don't waste any time with it. Right? But I like to give them one shot. It's too good to be true. It sounds too good to be true. How do you want to sound? Terrible? <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> like, isn't that a silly question? Yeah. Or like a silly objection? It sounds too good to be true. But how do you want to sound? Terrible? Well, think about it. If you don't refer anybody, you don't do no work, you're not going to make any money. I don't know how that's too good to be true. 
<laughs> Think about it. The bottom three position. Three that get three, that's 12 people. Can we agree? Yes. Okay, the county pays you how much? That's 50%. Yeah. I don't know how that's too good to be true. I mean, they're paying you 50%. And guess what? The company pays no money to advertise things. So they're able to pay us that money. Instead of paying advertisers, they pay us. You understand math, right? It's paying you 50%. If I refer to three people, my membership is free. I pay me 100 bucks a month. That's 33%. I got friends that sell real estate. They get paid 70% commissions. Right? Well, 70% on the commission, right? Not, not of the sale of home. Right? But a lot of people sell a bunch of things and they get paid 50%. But guess what? A lot of those companies, even the people that sell door-to-door uh, -door at and stuff like that, they can be still investing a lot of money in advertising. Does that make sense? And they still pay them those commissions. So with our company, all they do is they don't pay a dime for advertising, but they pay us. And if we don't produce, we don't make any money. So maybe you didn't understand, but this certainly is real good. It's better than a job, but what do you mean too good to be true? You know what I mean? A lot of times people will give you objections, but they don't even know themselves what the hell they're talking about. <laughs> My friends wouldn't be interested. How do you know? Have you told them about this already? Uh, Have they seen it? Right? See, a lot of these objections, guys, like I said, are objections of people that they just want to give you an objection. Though, if I feel that somebody's giving me an objection just to give me an objection, I tell them. I put them on the spot. Well, let me ask you, let's say it's Nate. Let me ask you something, Nate. Are you telling me these things because you're just flat out not interested, bro? Because if that's the case, I don't want to waste your time. Or are you asking me these questions because you, you, you seriously are interested? Because let's be honest, bro. You don't know if your friends will be interested, bro. They haven't seen it. And you're right. Not everybody will be interested. You show this to 10 people, on average, three or five are interested. So you're right. About 70% won't be interested. You're absolutely right about that. Does that make sense, guys? Only the people at the top make all the money. There's a lot of ways to answer that. Right? Who makes more money, you or your boss? He's at the top, isn't he? Who makes more money, your boss or the owner of the company? The owner of the company. Well, that's interesting. So it kind of works the same way. Same thing. If somebody tells me, well, it's because the people at the top make all the money. Yeah, and I got one. I, I got one in the top position. I got one more. Do you want it? <laughs> right? And if I'm building the business, I got people in my holding tank. Guess what? I got a group of 15 people who I'm about to put in. Right? And you got that position right above it. And I deserve to say that. You know why? Because I work my tail off to have that team there. You know what I'm talking about? I'm always in zone one. I'm always recruiting people. Okay? I already make some money, but how many people are you helping them? That's good. Congratulations. But how many people are you impacting in a positive way? How many people are you showing to make good money like you? And most of the time, when they make good money, they work a lot of hours. Oh, really? What do you do? I ask them questions. I mean, I already make a living. What do you do? Oh, I'm an attorney. Or I'm this, I'm that. Yeah, how many hours do you work, bro? If you don't mind me asking. Oh, I do work a lot of hours. Yeah. What good is all the money with all due respect if you don't got the time to enjoy it? What if I can show you how to make double that money or even just match it, but you've got the time freedom to enjoy it? Would that, would that be something that would interest you? I like or love what I do. Perfect. We're not telling you to leave it. There's something you can do in addition to whatever it is you're doing. Matter of fact, you like it so much, we can show you how to make enough money doing this, okay, to where you can dedicate even more time to doing whatever it is that you love to do. So we're not telling you to leave what you're doing. There's something you do in addition to what you're doing. I'll get started when my friends get started. Listen, if that's the case, I, I, this is how I would answer it first. You don't have to answer it the way I answer it. I'm just telling you how I would answer it. Because if they tell me that, that shows me a weak person. I said, you know what, if that's the case, your friends are going to see that you don't have any skin in the game, they're probably not going to be interested. What if they said the same thing? And if that's the case, you're better off just keeping your job because this business is not for you. I'm looking for people that really want to make it happen, people that are hungry. And if that's the way that your mentality is, that's cool. But I don't think this business is for you. I will take it away from you. You see what I'm talking about? Take it away from it. My friends tried this and it didn't work. I, I, I use that one all the time. I got friends that tried the gym, it didn't work for them, it's still fat. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, seriously. I bet your friends, whatever job they got right now, they probably tried other jobs before that, didn't they? Why didn't they quit? I bet your friends also, whatever relationship they're in right now, that's probably not the only relationship they've ever been in, right? Because they didn't quit. So what, what makes it any different? Besides, because your friends fail at something, does that mean that you have to fail at it too? Right? It's so like a lot of ways. And obviously, the more practice you get, the better you're going to get at it. Okay? 
I need to talk it over with my spouse or my parents. If they tell me that, guys, I do try to sign them up on the spot. But if they are going to do that, I try to set up an appointment to meet with them and show them 100% of the information. What you don't want is you don't want that individual to leave and try to present it themselves. A lot of people will do that. If they do it, they're done. Here's what I will tell them. Okay, great. Here's what we'll do. Uh, there, there's, there are studies that show that when somebody listens to some information, they retain about 7% of information. Let's say you're way above average and you retain 50% of information. If you show it to your spouse, what if they only get 25% of information? Can they make an educated decision on 25% of information? No. no. That's what, what we should do, if that's what you really want to do, is set up an appointment to meet with them. Have me present 100% of information. Is that fair? Okay. What's a good day that we can meet? Tomorrow or Thursday? Does that make sense? Set up two appointments, right? Set up two days. That's real. Because if not the... Guys, trust me. You can somebody do that. They try to go and explain the business to somebody. Instead, set up an appointment to show them the plan. That's a great way of doing it. I was taught this many, many years ago. The average person retains 70% of, what they, of the information that they get. Let's say you're way above average. You retain 50%, but you show it to your spouse. She gets 25%. 50% of your, of your uh, 50% is 25%. Can they make an educated decision on 25%? No. no. Why don't we get together and set up an appointment for me to show 100% of the information to your spouse? Is that fair? Does that make sense? Yeah. I've done that countless times, and I signed up the spouse. And the, a lot of times I've done it where the spouse is like way more interested than the, than the, the person that saw the meeting. <laughs> but you have to, those are the little things. See, the average person will say, oh, okay, let them go on by their business and talk to their spouse and never sign them up. The professional takes the initiative and applies what they're learning and goes out there and does it, shows the plan. Does that make sense? And guess what? As you're showing the plan, they got a way higher chance of signing them up, and then they get experience. Okay? If one is so good, why don't you uh, uh, pay the money for me? I love that one. People say something like that. They're, they're in trouble. You tell me yeah. that, man. You're in trouble. Well, let me ask you something, man. If you don't believe in yourself to invest a hundred bucks, why should I believe in you? Does that make sense? If you don't believe in yourself enough to invest a hundred dollars in yourself, why should I believe enough in you to invest in you? Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. Not only that, you're not gonna take a surgery about investing in you. And it's a hundred bucks, bro. So did you like if somebody had now I'll ask them. But let me ask them, did you like what you saw? Yes. Okay, great. So you're saying that for a hundred bucks, you're going to stop yourself from making the kind of money you can make here for a hundred bucks? I don't think it's a business for you. But my, my favorite way to overcome that objection is, if you don't believe in yourself enough to invest a hundred bucks in yourself, why should I? These are the phases of network marketing, guys. Phase one is engaging the money-making activities. Recruiting, retailing, one-on-ones, and meetings, home events. Five M's. More meetings mean more money. This is what we talked about. This is A, activity. This is phase one. This is very important, you guys. This, this, this part, guys, very important you guys pay attention to this. You recording? No, on my phone either? Damn. Yeah. Yeah, matter of fact, start recording so I can, uh, I want to record this part. Very good. This is the four, this is the, the four phases of network marketing. Very, very important you guys pay attention to this. Right? Yeah. Okay. Phase number one is somebody who's engaged in money-making activities. We talked about this. A, activities. Money-making activities. Recruiting, retailing, one-on-ones, home events, meetings. Remember, more meetings mean what? More, more money. money. More money. Okay? You have forward learning motion. You are excited and experiencing growth and momentum. Phase number two, this is a person that's overseeing the doers, managing people in phase one. This is phase two. Why do you think it's a red? Because you do not want to be in phase two. This is, you're in management mode. You have slowed down. You are having problems, becoming a complainer, and are losing momentum. You need to be in zone one, man, until you're making well over six figures. Uh, if you're not making six figures a year consistently, you should not not be in phase one. You should always be recruiting new people. Always be recruiting new people. Then it gets worse. Phase three. Overseeing the overseers. Okay? Overseeing the overseers of the doers managing people in phase two. 
Now you have stopped working, you have a lot of people, you have a lot of problems, very negative, and are seeing negative momentum. Some of you, some of you guys are gonna go into making a lot of phone calls, inviting people, then all of a sudden you got no team, and you think you're not gonna invite people no more. You're just gonna show up to the meeting, see your people that got people. You you got the wrong man, big time wrong mentality. You've gotta be building with your team, leading by example. If you are not constantly recruiting with your team, your team will do what you do, not what you say. You guys see what I'm talking about? Yeah. They don't see you show up to meetings. They don't see you show up with guests. They will not do it. Does that make sense, guys? Mm -hmm. Not that, if you're constantly recruiting people in our conversation, and like you place people on the people, don't you think they'll get excited? Yes. yes, they'll get excited. And that shows them, and it creates momentum. It creates synergy. And then the phase four oversees the overseers. <laughs> and the overseers and the doers managing people in phase three. Okay, you're looking for other opportunities now or a job. You're blaming everybody else and have lost momentum for your team. But, so what's the moral of the story, guys? Stay in phase one. Recruiting, doing presentations, okay? Let me give, let me give you guys a plan on consistency. consistency. This is consistently being consistent, plan A. Let's say you're enrolling one new VIP agent on your team per day. Now, granted, it's gonna take a while to get there. But I just kinda wanna get you guys to see the potential. How many of you guys think that getting to the point where your team is enrolling one, just one person in your entire team a day is hard? It's not, right? Check it out. One agent per day, that's 365 agents per year, that's 90 PV in volume, that's $2,000 in volume, you're a founder of five, you're 500 bucks a month. Let's say worst case scenario in a year, Worst case scenario in a year, you end up with a founder five following that system. Would that be okay? Yes. But think about it. If all of these people just ordered one case of thunder, how many cases? One. One case of thunder. That's an additional eight thousand two hundred and twelve dollars in volume. If you're at over forty thousand volume, your founder six making a six figure income. Would that be okay? Yes. Yeah. That's crazy, man. Now, the, the next example, okay. What if you have three core agents doing the same thing, one person per day? So that's 1,460 agents uh, a year. At 90 PV, that's 131,000 in volume. You're an executive, you're making over 20 grand a month. With just three people joining your team a day. Now, here's the thing, guys. You can get there. If you're a founder, let's say you're a founder three. Let's say you got an average of 20 people on your team. Think about it. If you're promoting the call, the system to your team, and you're 20 people on your team, any one of those 20 recruit one a day. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. Is that doable? Yes. 100%. Now, think about it. That's not about one a day through the whole year. By, by, by halfway through the year, you got hundreds of people in your organization. Does that make sense, guys? And we're still just talking about one a day. So when we talk about this, it's very doable. So in that last example, you're talking about one a day, that's founder, and then everybody's just ordering one case a month, you're a founder six. If you're doing three a day, that's 20 grand a month. Would that be okay, guys? Yeah. That's about a quarter million dollars a year, okay? So congratulations. We, we're, we're not done with training, but we do want to take a break. Here's what we want to do. We want to take a break. We're not going to do the team building on this training because we're not going to have enough time. So we're going to do part of the sponsoring training. So right now we're going to do is we're going to take a break for about 10 minutes.